Right. Um, hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> hi. I, I love the show. <laughs> I've been hey, Stephen. Yes. I am. Um, it's incredibly funny. Uh, and I, there are some lines. I, I don't even know the noise I made when they were sort of said. It was this sort of <laughs> I, think, I, was, I watched it when I was eating my breakfast over the last couple of days. And I think there was one moment where I almost actually spat my cereal out, almost like a cliche of like, you know. Yes. Um, Actual so, spit take. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, <laughs> uh, with you, Naomi, because I know you're part of the creating team here. How, how, so how did this yes. first come about, this show? When, when did this kind of idea first come to fruition? Well, uh, the show actually sort of, uh, it was a competition in Australia um, with ABC, which is like our BBC and um, Screen Australia, just funding bodies that um, just trying to find fresh talent. It's called Fresh Blood. Um, so I thought, what could I write about? You know, I grew up on sitcoms. I love sitcoms. And um, I, the thing that I thought would be interesting is um, a show based on my friendship with uh, my friend Hum, who's one of the other two co-creators. Uh, and we just have such a unique um, friendship and I guess perspective. We're very angry people. Uh, so we thought, you know, let's write about that and see what happens. Uh, and we went through the stages of the competition. You know, there's a web series and then there were pilots and then we got the TV show. And, and, and here we are, here we are talking to you. <laughs> we won. <laughs> Me. So yeah, uh, Will, did you guys know each other before, um, before you got started making this or did you meet for the first time? No, you- so Liv and I both um, auditioned Cattle Call. Uh, maybe there wasn't enough people to call it that, but no, we both auditioned. We hadn't met none before. No, and I believe Will had just gotten back from Coachella. <laughs> I just got back from, I'm pretty sure, and Jesse and Adam, our directors, told me that that's the only reason they cast me, because they thought I was exciting and an up-and-comer, because I just got back from LA, but I was on a holiday, so it doesn't really Yeah, change. that's the thing, you are like, oh, sorry, I just got back from LA, and we were like, wow, move a shaker Hollywood, um, but no, he was just there to see Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, and my friend lives there. Beyonce at Coachella was pretty iconic, though. It was pretty <laughs> fucking iconic. Yeah. It was well, so yeah. good. I mean, Except, I will trip. say... But the Beyonce fans are not the best fans to be at a music festival with because like there was like hundreds of meters from the stage of like Beyonce fans like cross-legged sitting on the ground throughout all of the acts leading up to Beyonce. <laughs> so all of your like other favorite bands are playing and there's just like Beyonce fans sitting down just like. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a lot. Anyway, that's how it was Beyonce <laughs> Uh, Olivia, I was going to ask because Pe- Penny and Mia, they they mean really well, don't they? I mean, they manage to piss everyone off, but they do they do mean well. They must it must be a nice character for you to get your teeth into here because they they have a lot of heart, even if they are flawed to say the least. Um, yeah, I think Penny means well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Mia means well. I think Mia Mia means well only with those closest. Um, Mm-hmm. But it was so fun. I mean, I always like it was it was something I've never done before. Um, and I think there's a lot of truth in those characters. So it was really, really fun to um kind of unpack all of it. Yeah. Yeah, Naomi, how much of your I know obviously you said it was sort of based around the real friendships you had, but even when when you were actually on set, how much of yourself did you put into into this? Not just from the writing perspective, but actually in the kind of acting side of things. Uh yeah, no, this is I I still don't know how good of an actor I actually am because a lot of this is just me playing myself. Uh, and there were times when, you know, we we do the scripted takes and because I'm the least experienced actor out of the three of us, uh, then we do a sort of like improv take or whatever. And even though there were words that I had written for myself, I would do it a different way and it would just be how I'd respond to the situation. So I think it did make it a lot easier. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yes, it was it was very much just myself and bringing a lot of myself. So the show is um, my child, and if people don't like it, um, then I don't know. I guess I will just die. <laughs> <laughs> and well, how was it? Did you enjoy the the, the, the drag sequences? Is that something you've you've ever tried before? Oh, so much. It was um, amazing. It was so fucking cool being able to like have an excuse to just dive headfirst into the world of drag and like. I'd done a little bit of drag before, um, but not very much. And I hadn't done it for like a year um, before I auditioned. Um, but then I'd seen like one 
I shouldn't say this. I've seen like one season of Drag Race and now I've seen <laughs> all of it. I haven't had first. I'm going to get cancelled for that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, deeply obsessed with it now. Um, it You'd was seen the live funnest drag. thing to research. Pardon? You'd seen live drag. Had a, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> it's coming out a little bit, I reckon. <laughs> A little bit. Or had you not? Um, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, it was amazing to dive in. Um, I got to do like a baby drag queen competition um, as part of the lead up for the show. And it was one of the funnest things ever. Um, and he won. He won. I did. It was pretty fun. <laughs> it, it was, was um, I'd never been in drag in a nightclub before. It was actually really strange because like, Everyone just stares at your face. It's just people just come up to you and are just like, wow, <laughs> staring at your makeup. But um, yeah, it was really fun. Um, I feel totally blessed to have been able to like dive into it. I wish that Austin didn't always have to be doing a bad job of drag. Because <laughs> I yeah, want to that's actually could. a real shame. That's actually <laughs> such a shame. Okay, but I someone know. succeeding is not funny. <laughs> I know, but it could be. Anyway, um, we'll talk about that later. Um, it was it was still really fun, but yeah, on set, Jesse and Adam, our directors, were often just like, yeah, less good, bad, 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 um, which was <laughs> funny. Funny because I'd spent so much time trying to learn how to try and be good at drag, and then I had to like be really bad at it. It was fun. Yeah, well, maybe maybe in season three or season four, they come. You could start inviting in <laughs> more better drag sequences. But are you are you excited? Yeah. Remember you got into RuPaul now. RuPaul Down Under starts on the first of May. It's quite exciting. I know. Mm. Yeah, we were just saying. I've been trying to like manipulate anyone who has any power to try and get me and well, me and Norm or anyone as guest judges, but it's already been shot, and that's rude. Um, Wait, but two. no, so excited. The queens look amazing. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask to Olivia, because I mean, some of the lines in this, as I mentioned at the start, they did make me spit out my cereal. What was it like seeing them written down? Because uh, I guess I, I know, obviously, there must have been some room for kind of improvisation stuff. But some of the lines, because they are things when you say them out loud, they sort of they can sound shocking or close to the bone or quite extreme in a kind of in a funny way. But when you actually mm. see them down, did you ever just go, oh, my God, I've got to say that? <laughs> I have a I have an album in my phone of like the most shocking things me has said. Like and and an album. It's not like an album that I've like created. It's just like while I was reading the script, I was like, "Oh my god!" And I like would send it to my best friend and be like, "You know, I'm gonna say this tomorrow. Like, this is fucked." <laughs> um, and there was actually one, and I kind of when I when I go and said, I think that I kind of just forget about a lot of things, and I am quite like, especially on our set, it was we. Were, I think everyone was quite present. Um, and there was this one, <laughs> there was this one scene where um it's in episode six it's one of the first scenes and we're walking to um what are we walking to now I can't remember train station. Train yeah we're walking to the train station and I'm talking about cum and um <laughs> and there's there's these kids that live in the, the next door houses and I'm like have no like I have no awareness to anyone around me at this point and I'm saying the word cum which is my line so loudly like and it's what I say is like so disgustingly it's just gross what I say is just gross and these kids are literally just like watching me say it and then Nom's like and not keep in mind Nom's written this and then they call cut and Nom's like you yelled that in front of those kids <laughs> and I was like what my this, line. Is what to, this is what I paid to do like, oh. oh, they were like six. They don't know what cum is. It's fine. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, I just vomited or something because all I've had in my stomach is a multivitamin and cum. And I apparently yeah, like, I'm really a multivitamin. Outs cum really loudly. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Naomi, you had to write some of these lines down. How was that? Must have been quite fun. Was, was, <laughs> was there anything that you wrote that you thought we can't put that in? That's too much. I mean, there can't have been much stuff. Oh, there was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There was. We like we cannot do this. I will, of course, not repeat any of those lines out loud because um, I don't want to get cancelled too soon. You know, wait, wait till the show's out a week <laughs> before that happens. You know. That's um, true. But yeah, I think we had a really fun time with it. I think because we come from these backgrounds that are you know sensitive topics we didn't we didn't feel like we don't want to offend anyone because it's you know we're just writing from tr truth so we're like if the truth is this horrendous then someone's got to shine a light on it 
um, <laughs> and we will bravely be the ones to do it. Um, but yeah, it was it was fun. But yeah, there are some lines that I think what we always tried to do is we, we didn't want to ever be offensive for no reason. There are some that we're like, we don't need to be saying that. Um, so there were a few of those, but mostly we just were like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> I mean, I, I always use South Park as a good example of something that if you offend kind of everyone, it's kind of fair game, isn't it? Is that is that something that? <laughs> <you're>... <laughs> That's true. Uh, well, thank you for comparing us to South Park. Obviously, exactly the same. I I don't know. Like I I you know I watched a bit of South Park growing up. You know when my parents weren't there because they wouldn't let me watch South Park. But I. I I guess we don't really have that. Um, I don't think we have the same ethos of like offending everyone. And then, you know, that's equality. Well, I think we're very like, we have our own opinions and we're like, if we're not offending anyone we respect, I don't care. <laughs> like, you know, when new <laughs> conservative people, like, you know, like pundits, um, Sky News in Australia, I don't know what it is over there, but um, I knew they weren't going to like the show but I was like but well, I mean you know they're not they wouldn't like me either so I don't care <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, Olivia how how like important is the balance here to, in being able to like ridicule woke culture but we're, we're never feeling nasty with it to kind of remain affectionate and I guess in some ways still remain woke with it well if that makes sense you're talking about the show not in real life right oh no the show yeah <laughs> The show, because I was going, real life, I don't have the answer for you. Um, I'm problematic <laughs> in real life. I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> um, I don't, I think the balance is it, it, within the characters because um, each character has their own um, kind of values and morals that are, and they're actually quite different. They go about it in the same way with the same forceful, like, attitude. But I think that's where the balance is. There's one person that's going, shut up. And then there's another person being like, no, I'm right. And then there's another person that's going, um, this is what I believe. And then there's a comedy of it all together. So I think um, like uh, Penny is always on the trying to please people and not offend anyone. And me is going, shut up. Or, or she's kind of hearing it and then being like, shut up. Or maybe I agree um, forcefully. Um, <laughs> and there's Austin who's kind of going using his moral compass to kind of like he'll figure he'll, he'll use the rules for his advantage so I think that's like I don't know if that's a description that you guys would use for your characters but um <laughs> I feel like that's that. where the balance is I think the balance is in the difference in characters yeah yeah because well, I mean how, how important is it that we can kind of laugh at ourselves because I guess I guess well, it seems over here in Britain anything that's kind of anti-wokeness which which is open to ridicule at times uh, it belongs to what we call gammons which is basically old white men who seem to hate anything different to what they know but this show <laughs> this 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 program does kind of show doesn't it that poking fun doesn't have to belong to the right it can be done with self-deprecation too and quite important in some ways that we are self-deprecating with it Definitely. And I think it's like important not to rob people and communities of the right to be awful. <laughs> like everyone can be awful sometimes. And if you think that no one, if you think that anyone is like incapable of doing the wrong thing, then that's dumb. Um, and I think that sort of going back to what we were saying about Mia, it's like, I feel like what we found on set is that like, you can't be too concerned about Am I being likable? Like, is this too much? Am I taking this too far? Because it's like, no one's going to like these characters because like, they're so sweet when they say an awful thing. It's like, you just got to like, kind of unapologetically do the character. And then I think committing is what's going to make it fun. It's like, we're not trying to be like, fucking Ross and Rachel and from friend I mean that's probably a bad example but like it, the point <laughs> is to be like <laughs> the point is to take it a little bit too far like that's what the show is and I think that's what makes it work is that when you go balls to the wall it kind of like it's more fun to watch than people like skirting around the edges especially with like the tone of the show and the script it's like you don't want to be shying away from it mm, and I think it's also like you don't like <laughs> I feel like there are people who would be afraid to show a gay character or like a South Asian character being a bad person because they don't want to paint all people of that demographic in a bad light. But it's like, 
I mean, they're individual people, so they have just as much, just as much um, probability and the right to be awful. So it's, you know, it's it's actually really good diversity. I think yeah. we're all <laughs> we're all awful people. Basically, that's that's the thing to take from this is that everyone in the world. Yeah, but no, it's Absolutely. an awful because um, one of the, the sort of the, the the buzzword for me that I always tend to see as a kind of safe bet is, for, as a Brit, is Australian. When I see the word Australian comedy um, or comedy sort of from down under, it, it does fill me with kind of quite with hope because I think we've got very similar um, kind of sense of humour. Wow. Do you, That's good to hear. <laughs> is that is that reciprocated? Do you guys find sort of British comedy quite enjoyable? Is, is I, it quite no. Absolutely. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's why I think, you know, I I think even in the comedy scene, I think even like Australian, because I'm I'm from comedy, so you know, a lot of the media that I've been a part of so far it's been like podcasts and stuff which pick up really big uk audiences and i think it is that um sort of self-deprecating sense of humor like not taking yourselves too seriously and also never like thinking that you're too good because i feel like american comedy as much as i love it like it's some of my favorite stuff they just think in a bit of a different way i think they're much more like they have more self-esteem <laughs> Um, and I think <laughs> England and Australia have that in common where we're like, you know, you're never that good of a person. <laughs> and we that is what's so failure, funny. Don't we? I always find failure is what makes our comedy quite funny. Yeah. Whereas yeah, in America, yeah. it's successful. Yeah. Yes. I think it's, it's, I don't know who said this and, you know, there's someone very famous who said this, but the, so you don't need to hear me quote it, but they were talking about the difference between American and UK comedy is like a guy is playing the guitar and then someone else grabs the guitar and hits him over the head with it. In an American comedy, it would be the guy who grabbed the guitar who's the main character, but in a UK comedy, it would be the guy getting hit on the head. <laughs> and I very much oh. agree with that. Um, and I do think that's what we have in common. It's what's funny is, um, yeah, just watching people get beaten down repeatedly. And I think that's <laughs> what the show does. I, I was going to, Olivia, obviously this is, you must be so thrilled as well, this is coming to, to Netflix. I mean, that's an amazing accessibility, isn't it? I mean, that the second you put that word in front of a show like this, it kind of instantly, it's not, it's not just a seal, it's not like a certificate of approval, but it just instantly puts it into homes all around the world. You must be thrilled it's been, it's landed and found its way onto that platform. Yeah, I was so, I was so, so, so shocked when I found out. I remember when I found out we were... Uh, it was Noam, Will and I at um, a bar called Bodrigi in um, Abbotsford um, and we were told to like get to know each other or kind of reconnect after a couple of years <laughs> before we do season one and um, Noam kind of, well we kind of already knew but like told us a little bit more detail and I was just, I was so shocked. I said before I still can't believe it, like I won't believe it until someone sends me a photo of it on their Netflix and watching it like that is that was the coolest thing and then when I saw the photos that come up you know the photo that Netflix shows like um, a preview photo um when I saw that photo I was like oh that is the coolest so cool. thing I have ever seen yeah, yeah. it's so cool yeah it's pretty crazy it's like this is definitely uh it's such a dream thing i just think like five years ago you told me i was going to be on a net was netflix around five years ago anyway um <laughs> yes. um if, if you told me i was going to be on a series like that i would not have believed you like it's just so fucking cool mm, and, and I, to play these characters as well it's really cool i think one thing that i am really excited about about netflix is that like that's how i discovered um like chewing gum and it was such like a british show oh. and i just thought Fuck, I'd love to be, sorry, I shouldn't swear. I'd love to be like the Australian version of that, like a show that is Australian, but has like universal themes and then just like having people all over the world to be able to watch it. I can't believe that it's on Netflix. Yeah, well, you guys deserve it. It's I definitely show. would have thought, sorry. Oh, no, 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 I was just, I was just, I was just gonna say that. <laughs> Let him tell the compliment, Will. <laughs> no, please, we need it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, was just, I was just saying it's very deserved that it's found its way to Netflix I can't wait for everyone to see it it's, it's one of those shows I want to be as widespread as possible not something you say to people oh you should see this on channel kind of XYZ or something like that it's nice <laughs> that it's on something everyone knows <laughs> oh thank you 
Thanks. No. Uh, but my final question, and I will ask you, Will, is that this feels like a show that it, it has the potential to go on for kind of a number of years. It feels like it's got that potential to kind of be quite a long standing thing. Is, is that is that something you guys have discussed or is that something you're you're interested in doing? Is, is keep sort of playing these characters for for a while yet? I mean, absolutely. Like it really it all depends on how it goes on Netflix. Um, so watch it. Um, but it, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think that there's definitely, no one will tell you that like they've been uh, chatting about like possibilities for a second season, what could happen. And it's all, you know, it, it, it is all up to uh, how it goes. So fingers crossed. Yeah, we're all keen on it for sure. You know, there's, there's a million so different ways to punish these terrible people. Ooh. We'll always think of more. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like we really hit our stride like halfway through the shoot. Um, and I mean, for, for the writing as well, it's just like, it, I just, I'm so excited to see where it could go next and to see like where the pilot, which was shot a few years ago, was in like relation to the rest of the scripts and then the rest of the episodes as well in how they came out. Like it'd just be really cool to see um, where it could go. Cause for so many of us, it was our first thing like it was um, you know the creators it was their first time making tv and i mean Liv's been on names forever but for me it was my <laughs> first job as well um so i think it would be just cool to see where it could go with a little bit more time and like another just another crack at it it'd be so much fun yeah well fingers crossed in the future if there's another series we can do interviews like this in in person as well that'd be good wouldn't it no. yeah that'd, that'd be, be so nice, nice. Yay. <laughs> Cool. All right, well, thank you so much for your time today, guys. And best of luck with thank the Thank you. Thank you so much. Cool. All right, have a nice rest of the day. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, You Guys. Hey, You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.